all welcome on this lovely feast of the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Let's begin with a prayer. O oh God, who are pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practising the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so, in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal reward. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Luke's Gospel. Every year, the parents of Jesus used to go to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up for the feast as usual. When they were on their way home after the feast, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem without his parents knowing it. They assumed he was with the caravan, and it was only after a day's journey that they went to look for him among their relations and acquaintances. When they failed to find him, they went back to Jerusalem looking for him everywhere. Three days later, they found him in the temple, sitting among the doctors, listening to them and asking them questions. And all those who heard him were astounded at the intelligence and his, his replies. They were overcome when they saw him, and his mother said to him, My child, why have you done this to us? See how worried your father and I have been looking for you. Why were you looking for me, he replied. Did you not know that I must be busy with my father's affairs? But they did not understand what he meant. He then went down with them and came to Nazareth and lived under their authority. His mother stored up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature and in favour with God and man. celebrate the feast of the Holy Family today we tend to compare the lives of Jesus Mary and Joseph 
with our own family lives. And we feel very often that we do not meet the measure up to their high standards. In fact, we know very little about the lives, the daily lives of the Holy Family. Saint Luke gives us the most information, but that amounts to only a few lines of his gospel. What we can assume is that life would not have been very easy for families in Nazareth at that time. It seems to me though that the one thing that we can learn from the Mary and Joseph is that they both said yes to God's requests. Even though they didn't fully understand, they still said yes. Mary's let it be has resounded down the years. There's a the danger that we imagine that somewhere there's the perfect family who gets it all right. They all love each other perfectly, pray together and never have a cross word. We need to recognise that family life is usually very far from that ideal for most of us. We need to recognise that God is with us in the messiness and the conflicts of our family life. He is with us when we clean the bathroom, when we mow the lawn, when we look after a relative, when we get up to see to a child in the night, or when we deal with another load of washing. God is with us in all of those daily tasks because they reflect love and God is present in our love. In the second reading of today's Mass, St John reminds us that we are God's children and that God has lavished his love on us. Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us. He wants us to believe in his Son Jesus and to love one another as he told us to. That love is learned at the heart of every family. Parents should remember that they are the first and best teachers of their children. They need to have confidence and believe in themselves. It is within the home that we learn all about the give and take of daily living. As we celebrate this feast, we look with gratitude to our own families. We think about those members who have gone before us, who have had such a powerful influence on our lives. We also think about all of those who are with us now. A reflection about the family at this present time could not be made without reference to the effects of the Covid pandemic over the past two years. The young have been born into a world that is fragile and nervous about its future. The worries and the disruption of children's schooling caused by Covid have had a telling effect on their young lives. They need people to nurture them, to believe in them and to give them hope for the future. We also think of the effects of the adults in our families, especially those who are worried about finding employment, those who are finding it hard to feed their families, and those who may have been become addicted to drink or gambling or drugs. We think too of the elderly members of our families, many of whom have felt totally alone during this last two years. Many are troubled by illness and they are afraid of dying. They deserve our love, our care and our respect. We need to care for them all. A respected parishioner said to me a couple of days ago when I met up with him, if your family is all right, you are all right. But family life has been affected in a serious way in the last two years. Family plans have been disrupted on a large scale. Yet throughout all these difficulties, most of our families have shown great kindness 
have been willing to make sacrifices for others and have been prepared to put up with so much. A major concern for so many Catholic parents is that their children have left the church and their grandchildren are never going to experience Jesus. These people, these parents, feel that they have failed to pass on the faith to the next generation. But Jesus saw faith as trust in him and love of him. He invited his disciples to follow him and to be like him. Grown-up children may not go to church, but they can still follow these principles of trust and love. The essence of family life must be tolerance, communication and joy. Over the years when I've thought about family life, this quote has come to mind. A family is like an orchestra. Each instrument is beautiful when it plays alone, but when they all play together and each is given its own weight in turn, the result is even more beautiful. Thank you. On this feast day of the Holy Family, we know that Mary and Joseph certainly knew of the hardships to be encountered when travelling. Let us remember and pray for the many thousands of migrants fleeing poverty and cruelty in appalling circumstances so very many years later. Lord, hear us. Pope Francis says this, If we fight in the family, never end the day without making peace. He also reminds us to always use the words please, thank you and sorry. Let us pray for his continued health and ability to use his wisdom for our benefit. Bless our bishop, priests and religious that they be enabled to support our families in the current trying times and that they too enjoy being with their families when they can. Lord, hear us. Bless the leaders of the world with clarity and humility. Encourage their understanding of the plight of so many families and of the need to prioritise help for them. Bless our MPs and those in high office that they might provide more carefully for those less well off in society. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for the many families in our own parishes that are struggling to make ends meet because of the pandemic. Grant that the times of homeschooling and working from home be as peaceful as possible. Bless those who are sick, in hospital and those with no one to look after them. Lord, hear us. This Christmas, many families will face challenges of cold, hunger and homelessness. Bless them and keep them safe. Grant us the wisdom and charity to work positively to improve those lives by getting involved in the various organisations that strive to solve such problems. Keep safe all those who need to travel and may our homes be filled with love and empathy. Lord, hear us. May Mary, who showed by her example the importance of a loving family life, intercede for us with her son. Amen. Thank you everyone for helping to put together this lovely little video to celebrate the feast of the Holy Family, those who contributed, and Dominic again in the background putting all the pieces together and editing. It just leaves it for me now to say the final blessing. And this blessing is a one for all your family members, wherever they may be. May the healing grace of God be in your lives. May the Lord fill us with hearts full of joy and appreciation and gratitude for the presence of those who are with us, who take us for who we are and love us always. God's blessings be with you on all family members.
in the family, the family of the church, the family of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Fly.